Hey everybody, I'm Asia Funk, welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about a disappointing experience I had with a CGC authorized facilitator. Warning, the following video is for mature adult audiences only. It contains explicit language and extreme visuals that is not suitable for or aimed towards viewers under the age of 13. Viewer discretion is advised. Now just to clarify, this isn't really a bashing video. This is just kind of more of like a one-star review of a business. You know, like when you rate something on Yelp, I'm not representing anyone else's experiences. This is strictly my own. Now, for those of you who don't know what a CGC facilitator is, uh, it's basically a person or a group that is authorized by this grading company called CGC. They are authorized to do certain things like witness a signature on a comic book, submit comic books to CGC to be encapsulated, things like that. So when I first got into uh, slabbing comics or encapsulating comics, one of the biggest hurdles I had to overcome was where to find a authorized facilitator or a facilitator that I trusted. I feel like it was only in the last six months that CGC uh, put a very comprehensive list of all the facilitators from around the country that they trusted. I'm not exactly sure why it took CGC so long to do this, uh, considering that they've been around since 2000, and it's not like the idea of uh, slabbing comics is new. Like, this has been a thing for like at least the last decade. Now, to give you some context, uh, facilitators are very rare. As you can tell from the list that CGC provided, there's only 22 names on here in the entire country. And prior to them putting this list up, the only other way that you would have been able to uh, have found recommended facilitators was like in the depths of the CGC uh, chat forums and threads. That's also a nightmare to navigate. Prior to this list, there were only two ways you could find a facilitator. Uh, it was either going to the CGC community chat thread and just like basically asking people, or you knew a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy. Those were basically your two ways to find a facilitator. So not only was it a struggle to find a facilitator in general, uh, it was even more of a challenge to find a facilitator in my area. Uh, there was no guarantee that they were gonna go to a convention that you wanted or a convention near you. Now again, for more context, uh, most facilitators are located in the East Coast and the Midwest. Not sure why, but that's just how it is. Now, out of the 22 names on this, only four of them are in California. And out of those four, three of them are in Southern California. Luckily, that one facilitator is in the San Francisco Bay Area. And that one facilitator was Comics and Ponies in Richmond, California. Now, after going through the list, I discovered that I've already used about eight of these 22 facilitators. And I've had really awesome experiences with all eight of them. So um, in terms of the legitimacy of this list, I was pretty confident. I was pretty sure everyone on this list was like top notch, A plus, uh, best at what they do. Um, you know, they are the, the cream of the crop, right? They're the ones that CGC recommends. Therefore, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? What could go wrong? I decided to do a little more research on them. They had a website that looked pretty recent. Uh, it didn't look like an abandoned shell of a site. I verified that all their social medias were pretty uh, recent as well. It all seemed pretty legit. My next move was to figure out what conventions uh, in my area were happening that I really cared about. There was one con that I've never been to, but I've heard good things about, and that was the East Bay Comic Con. This is gonna be their sixth year uh, in Concord, and they had some pretty big names uh, coming up for their next show, like Art Adams and uh, Dan Brereton, uh, two artists that I really like. They had one creator that I got really excited for, and that was Frank Cho. Now, for those of you who don't know who Frank Cho is, he's a pretty famous comic book artist. He's worked for Marvel and DC on titles like Spider-Man, Wolverine, X-Men, Wonder Woman, his most famous one, Shauna the She-Devil. I never met him. I don't have any signatures from him, so uh, I got really excited. Normally doesn't come to small cons like this one. With this convention less than two months away, uh, I decided to finally contact Comics and Ponies uh, through email. Here's a graphic of our emails back and forth to each other in the two months that we communicated. As you can tell, he was very responsive in the beginning. I sent out my first email on January 15. Just wondering if you were going to attend the East Bay Comic Con in Cogger this February, and if so, would you be willing to facilitate in CGC witness a sketch from artist Frank Cho for me? And as you can tell, he quickly replied back. Yes, we will be at East Bay Comic Con. We will likely be posted up near the Top Cow booth. We usually attend all the East Bay and NorCal shows. Thanks, Dave. We continued to email each other back and forth, and as you can tell, 
He was pretty responsive. He would even email me the same day, which is great. What I didn't know was that there was a strong chance that Frank Cho was gonna cancel his appearance. I wanted to find out if this was indeed true, so I checked out Frank Cho's Facebook page. East Bay Comic Con wasn't on his most updated list of conventions that he was attending. Now this had me worried because the book was already on its way to Comics and Ponies by the time David told me that there was a chance he wasn't gonna show. It was confirmed around the second week of February that Frank Show was indeed not going to attend the East Bay Comic Con, nearly days before the event. February 6th at 4 p.m. Hey Dave, you were right about Frank canceling at East Bay Comic Con. Could you have Dan Brereton do a head sketch of Wolverine on the blank comic I sent you? I'd really appreciate it. February 9 at 11 a.m. Hey Dave, just got confirmation from artist Dan Brereton at the East Bay Comic Con that he will be doing sketches. So you should be good to have him sketch Wolverine on the blank comic I sent you. February 18 at 3 p.m. Hey Dave, hope you had a great weekend. Just wanted to check in on that blank variant comic I sent you and if you were able to get a sketch from Dan Brereton at the East Bay Comic Con a few weekends ago, any updates would be greatly appreciated. Thanks. Like, I was legit worried, like maybe he had a family emergency. Like up until then, he was basically replying to my emails on the same day. Then I saw he retweeted a picture of a photo on February 12th. So I was actually really relieved that he was alive, you know, like, whew, okay, he's fine, he's fine. Like, you're alive, great. Computer, enhance. Computer, enhance. I said enhance. Now this is what I can't stand. When you don't respond to my emails, but you're updating your Twitter. Like that's just like straight up disrespectful. I sent you an email on February 9th and February 18th, but you retweeted a picture on the 12th. Now I'm making this video because if your name is on the authorized CGC facilitator list, I'm holding you to a higher standard. You made this list for a reason. You were chosen by CGC because you were the best of the best. And being on this list is a big deal. It would be like if YouTube were to promote my channel on like the top 10 ch comic book channels to check out or whatever. Now I'm not expecting stellar communication skills. Hell, I'm not even expecting good grammar. But what I am expecting is that you have good customer service and that you're good at what you do, which is facilitate my books. Now I'm fully aware that like shit happens, you know, life gets in the way, we get super busy, emails get buried, etc. I get that. But as a potential paying customer, and if you're running a service-oriented business, uh, at the very least, I would expect something like, oh, I've been super busy lately, sorry I've been able to reply, we'll get to you soon. Something. My request is not urgent. I would just like to know where I am in, in your queue. But after three separate emails sent days and even weeks apart from each other with no reply, like, I honestly don't even give a funk about the comic book I sent him. He can keep it. Consider it as like a, a parting gift. Like, I just wanted to know that if this is someone I could contact again in the future for another convention, and sadly the answer is no. I will not be using him moving forward uh, to facilitate any of my comic books at any convention. I made this video to let you know that if you do decide to use Dave at Comics and Ponies in Richmond, just be prepared to be ghosted and disappointed. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Are you looking for that sick shirt to rock to the next con? Or are you looking for that casual Friday shirt that says, I'm a nerd, so what? Or do you just like having Stan Lee printed all over your clothes? Well, whatever your occasion, I highly recommend checking out the Enough Said Short Sleeve Shirt from Preppy Pop. This officially licensed shirt is limited to only 500, so if you're thinking of getting one or would like to support the channel, use promo code ASIANFUNK and save 10% off your entire purchase. I'll drop a link in the description below so you can check out the shirts for yourself. And a huge thanks to Preppy Pop for supporting this channel.